So I just finished a 24 hour shift and I decided what is a plane that really recaptures the feeling of absolute dread that I'm experiencing right now. And it has to be the TA-154. It's the 4.3 premium that a lot of people are suggesting me to try out because it's absolutely amazing. Well I did try it out a little bit ago. And let me tell you, this thing is not as good as people were making it out to be. Sure you have an air spawn, you have a pretty good damage model and you have pretty decent guns. But that's about where the advantages end. This thing is pretty dreadful. And I'm gonna be showing you just how bad it turns by comparing it directly to a J2M3. That is of course a lie. Because first of all that's a J2M5 and I just can't read anymore. And secondly I'm of course highly sarcastic because of course a J2M3 is going to be winning this. What I'm trying to convey here is just how poorly he is flying it. And how hard of a time I am having in terms of getting shots on him. I'm cutting throttle, I'm going slower than him, he is selecting horrible lines and he basically keeps turning in front of me. Yet, and of course as I'm about to say that sentence, he actually hits us, but he's barely winning. And you can say, well, that's probably because the J2M3, J2M5 is just that good. And yes it is. But this thing is also just that bad. I'm trying to get behind him, cutting throttle again, I'm gonna ignore the guy on R6, because I mean I can't really dodge him anyway, I'm just gonna try to pull into this guy and see if I can do something about him. The answer is no. I really can't do anything against the J2M3. Well then of course kill him post-mortem. Because that's the only time this thing actually becomes dangerous. I'm gonna show you it now against an ITP. And first the ITP it's a little bit more doable. And I'll show you just how to fly this thing in a little bit here. I'll show you just how dreadful it really is in a full game. Because in these fights... It might look like it's not as bad as it might be. But I want to show you these fights just to say that you, of course you can win these fights. Of course you can use anecdotal experience to say well I reversed an ITP. I reversed a J2M3. I reversed blah blah blah. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day this thing just doesn't turn whatsoever. ITP however also doesn't really turn. And I'm going to be trying to abuse that fact because he will compress. And he won't turn very well to begin with. So we're going to make him very fast. We drop our throttle and he's going to be comparatively even quicker. And then we can somewhat turn into him because he's simply going to overshoot due to his excess of speed. And there you have it. Before we really get started with today's video, thank you to all my patrons and to everyone looking to buy anything from the Gaijin store. I have a discount link down below and yes, it does have a decal now which also will be on the screen here. And how do you pick it up? You just purchase anything through the link down below it doesn't matter if it's 150 ge and it doesn't matter if it's now or in next year so you really are not in a hurry at all so the tar 154 and here you see it in its natural habitat where people say this thing is amazing a small map with an air spawn in well unfortunately speaking an up deal but you can still head on most people because this thing is an absolute tank when it comes to taking damage and i'll showcase enough of that in this game as well and really that's one of the saving graces that this thing has so i know that if you are someone that just likes to send it for head-ons especially early game because you get the air spawn you're probably going to kill them because they are going to go very slow you are going to be diving on them and you are very likely to survive said head-on because this thing is just an absolute tank and you still have four pretty decent guns in the nose we go for the f6c basically a p51c I'm trying to cut him off and I just missed my shots, that's poor rain, there's no excuse about it. This is also the first game I did in it. So, well, first game in recent in recent times, because I have flown it before. I did know how uh, dreadful this thing really was. But some people were saying it uh, flight model will change, some people were saying they got 4 kills per game in it. And I know for a fact you don't, but it at least kind of humors me into trying it out, just to see how bad it really is. Because normally, the bigger the cult following behind the plane, the worse it typically is for I don't know how that works but it's pretty funny nonetheless so the Spitfire here is gonna try to engage us and we have quite a bit of energy here we have quite a bit of altitude so we are just gonna make him pitch up into us as we do very often we just make people bleed their own speed and then once we kind of pitch down again they are simply well they're out of energy they're going like 200 kilometers an hour and it doesn't matter how shit your plane is if you stall someone out you are going to be killing them Unless of course you're flying something like the Q5 where sometimes you turn so poorly that you just won't even get shots on him altogether. So we go head on, we miss our shots, very unfortunate, but we still have a lot of energy here. He's going like 
250, maybe 300. And we are going about 500. And even though he turns much better than us, it really doesn't matter. Because we simply have way more speed than him. And it doesn't matter how well he turns when you don't have the speed to move through the air. Because you might have a very tight loop. If you complete that tight loop at 200 kilometers an hour, you are basically flying in place. And it, you really aren't going to dodge any guns. So that's the Spitfire out of the match. And the Spitfires and stuff are definitely some of the most annoying planes you can face in this. Because they can simply just pitch up into you at basically any time if you don't have a lot of speed to work with. I notice the BF-109 is going very slow. Same deal as the Spitfire except that guy turns a hell of a lot worse. So we can actually try to shoot him down as we get back on the 6. And again he's just way too slow. This guy should have dived out just like the F-6 did at the start. He's completely oblivious to the fact that we re-engaged him. And he instantly goes down. And that's a very easy kill. And that's how a lot of your kills... Well, that's how a lot of your kills are going to look like. Now we have everyone below us. With a J2M3, J22 and a Spitfire. And a J2M2 here. I think it's an M2 anyway. Uh, if I don't kill him right here, he's probably going to kill us in one or two passes. Because if we go for anyone else, he's going to equalize the energy very quickly. If I just sit above him and don't engage anyone, he's eventually just going to outclimb us. Luckily for us... Yeah, I was going to say we're going to get a very easy shot, but we completely whiff it. That's very bad news. Dodge that guy, and now I have to force to take the head on with the J-22. Not a fan of that, because the J-22... Well, those guns are... They hit different. Luckily, my friend actually takes down the J-22. Well, I say my friend, but it's a random squad mate. And he's going to bring up the Spitfire, and I can leave him alone with it. But I can also just try and help him out. I'm completely crippled. I need to R to B right now. But the Spitfire is on the way back to the airfield. So I'm going to use that opportunity to pitch up for him. And also shoot him down. Absolutely amazing. We then go and land. And we uh, we die. I mean we uh, we win with 20 kills. We carry the match of course. We completely uh, win. We win every game. We can't lose. We can't die. Simply just auto win every time. And now again we have an air spawn. This is a slightly bigger map. And the air spawn kind of gets diminished here. It's not a massive map. Not, not by any stretch of the imagination. But the bigger the map, the smaller my air spawn advantage will become. Because the climb rate isn't that great. Key 44. Very nasty plane to deal with in this thing. Luckily he's going very slow. He tries to dodge the head on. And Kek W indeed. Because he is simply too slow to really dodge me properly. He also didn't do a very good job at trying to dodge me. But at those speeds it's very hard to not stick the head on. That's one of those one of those instances where it's almost worth to take it. But you just want to start dodging quicker to pick up some speed. And once you start getting within like 800 meters, you really want to just make sure that I do not get my nose on you. Which is not very hard, considering the plane that I'm flying today. It, it of course gets a little bit different once I start flying actual good planes like a 190. And you try to dodge the head on, then it becomes a little bit more tough. You're just going to need more speed to stay within that gun range even shorter i'm going sideways trying to energy trap the f6f except he does the smart thing by not taking it and then he just flies straight yeah he goes down another absolutely fantastic kill and if you haven't noticed the trend yet i'm not getting many interesting kills and why is that there is no much interesting performance to be had so you really just rely on people messing up you really rely on positioning to partying people and going for opportune target it flies a little bit like a v2 for example except you don't have to worry about an a9l and getting skill issued by one. Oh, sorry i can't say that anymore that's a slur now according to some people so looking around who do i want to dive on well the guy right below us is clearly getting shot at he is basically dead and there's a p51 in front of me who's pretty low these both of these guys are Pretty opportune targets here, but I'm gonna go for the P-51 instead. Because he's actually tangled up in a dogfight. And the P-51 was just now on the Yak-1-6. Uh, Is that a Yak-3? Yak-3-6. So I'm gonna decide and help him out. It looks like he doesn't really need help anymore. But he doesn't look damaged, so I'm just gonna sit with my crosshair above the plane. And he's eventually gonna pull up. And when he does, I'm just gonna squeeze the trigger. We almost break our wings off in that dive. We're going a little bit too fast. And I guess that's one of the quote-unquote redeeming factors of this thing. It doesn't lock up horribly. It's also compounded by the fact that it doesn't turn well to begin with. So there's not much turn to be lost. Also this thing overheats like a motherfucker. 
a weapon is or mech is almost mandatory if you actually want to use this thing again quote unquote properly because really it's mostly down to your enemies and here is my anecdotal evidence that the TA-154 can actually beat the XP-50. The only thing you need is double its speed and another kilometer of altitude on him. So you wait for him to pitch up for the head-on and you simply pull back in because he's going so damn slow that he just basically goes 200 kilometers an hour in front of you. There you have it. And now you can make a comment on every TA-154 video just to say, look, you can 1v1 them and win. It is an amazing aircraft. And no one can tell me differently. So, you know, a bit more of a struggle match. But it does showcase its... I was going to say strengths and weaknesses. But uh, it's mostly the latter. And the G55 is one of those planes I really don't want to engage in this thing. Why? Good guns, or at least three of the MG151s. Pretty quick. It's not like amazingly fast. But it turns quite well. And it's very... It's one of those planes that basically hard counts this. It climbs pretty decently. It's not awfully slow. It's not fast by any means, but it's fast enough. It climbs well enough. It can dive on you. It outturns you quite substantially. And it holds its speed somewhat okay. Now sure, it is fightable. But it's one of those planes that if he's kind of suicidal, if he, if he wants to die, and most G55 pilots, and I don't mean this guy. This guy actually played it quite alright in the end. But I mean G55s in general, when I run into them, are not the brightest people. Of course there are, there are always exceptions. But most of the time I run into a G55 player, he is the most suicidal guy I've ever come across. And it makes sense, because the G55 is actually best flown if you fly it somewhat suicidally. So if they're suicidal, it's either because of the bad or because of the good. So you can't really gauge them at all. It's very hard to... Engage a G55 in a plane that's not particularly good. And I'm trying to energy trap him here. And he's actually doing the right thing. He's not stalling himself out. He's not really pitching up for us. And he's not making our job very easy. I could have killed him with the first pass. But I simply missed. Wasn't the easiest shot. But I think I could have hit him. If I was flying something a little bit less boaty. Just like there. If I had a good shot. I was very close. But if I had just a little bit better gunnery with this thing. I might have taken him down right there. And here we have an F8F. It's the F8F1 because it's 5.3 now. And man, F8Fs in this thing. I was streaming this on Discord and I said I am fucking dead. There is no no chance I'm doing anything. But luckily for us he's cosplaying as a helicopter. And even though there is a G55 at altitude. The F8F here is just too important to let live. So I have him energy trapped right now. I'm gonna dive on him. And I'm going to make sure that he dies right here. I have to make sure. Because the f 8 in the long run is going to absolutely ruin this match for us. That guy is much quicker. Climbs much better. It bleeds its speed quite well. So there is no chance of reversing it. And it bleeds its speed quite well. So there is no chance of actually turning with it in the head-on either. Because he's just going to cut inside of a loop. He turns much better on top of it. And the only chance you really have is that he only has 450 cals. And of course that he cooks his engine quite rapidly. The issue here is there is a Spitfire on the deck. There's a second Spitfire on the deck. And that G55 isn't diving for the first guy he sees. The J21 there is also going to be pretty annoying. But at this point I'm already below them. I'm not going to get the energy advantage back on them. So I'd rather just clean it up down here. And I'll maintain the energy disadvantage. But at least I'll maintain the energy disadvantage. With slightly less enemies in the area. But then... The unthinkable happens. The G55 starts diving. I break off my attack because the Spitfire blowers also dies. And it kind of equals the playing field. The G55 is diving. The A21 is diving. And the Spitfire is still on the deck. And I notice the SU6. I have the 109Z dragging him along. He's going to bleed a lot of speed of that G55. And I also have a teammate on my left here. It's the P38. So we are in a pretty decent position here. And I'm not going to rush in. Get myself killed to get an easy kill anymore. Just like that P-38 did. That P-38 is basically the embodiment of what would have happened. If I had gone for the Spitfire. I would have been done right there. The P-38 though on fire. Still full commits the A-21. Then the A-21 takes it. For God knows what reason. But I'm very happy that he did. Right now Spitfire is a lot closer to us. So I'm going to go for him first. 
I'm keeping an eye on that G55 because I have a feeling he's just gonna turn around out of nowhere. But the SU6 is coming in at the same time as us. He's gonna distract the Spitfire. He's gonna be dodging him. And now the Spitfire is kind of unintentionally dodging us as well. But I'm directly above him. I have a decent amount of speed. And I want to pressure him right now as he doesn't have the altitude to dive away. Because if he can dive away at low airspeed, he's going to die. I'm going to have a very easy time killing him. And I just want to make sure that that G55 doesn't actually start killing us. G55 starts turning the other way. It means that I can pull in for the Spitfire. And at these speeds, it's not very hard to hit. And I say that as I almost miss him. Unfortunately, this thing does not pull very well. And have the guns on this frame go 500 meters a second which is approximately the same speed as my shit leaves my ass flying towards the toilet not exactly impressive but it does make for a massive splash towards your ass cheeks so what now g55 together with us and there's three guys in the area one right below me one on my left and they're all playing it kind of passively but then i notice the a7m the g55 takes down the su6 I'm flying in together and I, this guy needs to die right now. If we have the 2v1 together with that A7M2, we're done. That A7M2 is going to go quicker than us and I'm not having it. And I can of course fly back to the airfield but we're not going to do that either. I'm going to try to pull in but he's just a little bit too slow and he completes his loop just in time. And then because the 109 takes the worst head-on for us possible and actually misses it, he dodges us. As well, and then the 109 does the absolute worst thing imaginable, and he turns directly after us, making it so that the G55 is now on both our sixes, and we can't help each other. Absolutely fantastic. Three throws in the span of 15 seconds. Did I misplay that slightly? Sure, I did, but I didn't throw it completely. I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done it. I'm completely. F I'm gonna admit that I did. It's not that I'm gonna say that I, I never make mistakes. I, uh, I only do the right thing. But what I just witnessed is the worst play I've seen of the year. Now the A7F is going to be reeling us in. So what can I do other than just full commit him? Absolutely nothing. I'm forced to take this. If I don't, I lose. 50-50 trade. But a 50-50 is more than a 100% death. 50% more likely to survive. I'll take it any day of the week. And what do we do now? Well, the G55 is crit. He has a water leak. So I'm not in a hurry. This is the last guy... And I'm not going to be giving him a head-on at 350 kilometers an hour. It is not going to happen. And our engine is slightly damaged. But it's not leaking. It's not going to be continuing to get more damaged over time. So he's on the clock. We are not. And all I need to make sure is that he just doesn't get a shot on us. And looking at his speed. And judging from the fact that he has been leaking for quite a while now. And the G55 overheats quite quickly to begin with. He's probably in complete struggle mode. And you can tell I'm not trying to pull in for the head-on. I'm actually going to just continue flying straight to the left a little bit. Making him turn even more. Giving us less time to turn. Giving us a little bit more energy because I'm simply flying straight. And look how slow he is. Down he goes. And it doesn't matter how well he turns. If you don't have energy, you're not going to be winning. And G55 goes down. And we manage to salvage the match. And on to the last game where, well... It's basically Malt City. And I'll show you just how bad this thing really can be. We kill the Halifax. And then we go for the A6 ammo. I'm going to be cutting up this game a little bit. Because there's a lot of flying straight. A lot of just extending. We dive on the A6 M3. He tries to dodge. Very poorly does so. So we set him on fire. He's going to be burning up probably. Or at least very, very badly damaged. It's an A6 M3. So even if he does put it out. Which is pretty likely... He's not going to be in the best of shape. And then the Key 61 also comes in. But we have a lot more altitude here. And a lot more speed especially. So I'm just going to make him go sideways. Well we are going to go sideways. And I'm going to make him climb up to us. And if he decides to actually stick this climb. He will stall out. And we will have a very easy time shooting him down. Despite the fact that he turns much better than us. I'm just prolonging my stall here. I'm going to go horizontal for a little bit. Waiting for him to react. And just like that. We are going to be pulling inside of his loop. He's going pretty slow. We hold the trigger. We miss everything. But then with the last few shots we managed to hit him. Unfortunately, we managed to break our wings off. Or our flaps off, I should say. Might as well be the same effect. Because with the, well, without the flaps, this thing becomes absolutely unbearable. But you know, you gotta do with what you have. If I hadn't used my flaps, I probably wouldn't have killed him. 
So it's either the flaps or no kill. And if I hadn't killed him right there, we probably would be looking at a slightly different situation. We go sideways to climb away. Then I notice the entire enemy team. So we both fly away for a little bit to get a little bit of altitude. Some, a little bit of distance. And then the XP-50 has the absolute brilliant idea to go straight into there with an energy disadvantage. This is definitely the time to start doing this. Energy disadvantage against more maneuverable planes. Probably the worst matchup you can take. But... It does crit someone in the head on. It's a Spitfire. And it does invite the other two guys to actually engage him down below. So even though he did kind of throw there. He probably just got impatient. And I can't really blame him for it. Because this was going to be a pretty boring long game. He is now making it so that they are bleeding some altitude. Bleeding some speed. And he's putting me in a position. Where I can actually do something. So all in all. He did kind of help me out. But. He's in a plane that can win this. I am not. The role should be reversed right now. But you know. It is what it is. You'll have to do with what cards you are dealt. He's going to be running away for a little bit. Probably towards the airfield. Not sure what he's doing. And we have a Spitfire coming head on with us. And he really doesn't want to take the head on. Which is both good and bad for us. Because it means that we are going to get a relatively free shot in. However we don't manage to connect our rounds. And we now have to deal with this guy. That's right on our six. Problematic. For sure, because the Spitfire is just not a plane you really want to deal with. And in the background, the XP-50 gets cleaned up by the Key-61. So now, we have a Spitfire quite closely behind us. Another Spitfire directly below him. And then the Key-61, much below us. He's not really in the picture just yet. But if I wait too long with killing these two guys, I'm not going to be doing anything. So what do I do here? There really is no correct play. I have to do with again with the cars I am dealt. And make sure that I don't throw it completely. I do have altitude here. I do have some speed here. But look how quickly he is equalizing the altitude. And I'm trying to not go towards the airfield. But I'm also trying to not give this guy a very easy shot. I was going to go for the shallow climb. Stall him out. Pitch up. And then just kind of shit on him. Unfortunately for us. He was a little bit too quick and he's holding his speed too well. And he didn't start climbing on our 6 until right now. Which is problematic. And I'm simply flying straight. He kind of starts to turn a little bit. And I'm trying to not go towards the airfield. So he gives me a little bit of an opportunity here to pull in. And head on him. And I'm going to be taking it right here. I can't go ahead on with the guy below me. Because if I do this guy will kill me. So I'm just going to ignore the guy on my left. And I'm simply just going to try to shoot this guy down right here. And I have to kill him. If I don't I lose Luckily we do. And now we are in the exact same position again. However this time it's a different it's a different dude. And I'm going to try the same thing again. Because I thought he was slow enough. But I'm just going to stall in his guns. I'm going too slow. I don't have enough separation. And I'm a massive target. This thing might be a tank. If you're going 250, 200 kilometers an hour. And you give a Spitfire full broadside. You're probably going to die. So we go back into a dive. I was... Contemplating doing something else. That's why I started doing that other maneuver. But I'm forced to kind of dive out. Equalize. And hope this guy gets bored. I hope he goes to ground pound. I hope he goes to try and do anything. Because for now. I'm simply going to be running from him. Until I have enough separation to push ahead on. I cannot outclimb him. I cannot really reliably outrun him. With this damage. And I'm just not in a good position. So we pull back in. Because the Spitfire... I mean, he gives, gives us the opportunity to turn around, which is great. But then he... I don't know what he is doing. Because if he just went back for the head-on here, he probably would have... Well, completely shed on us. We check our supercharger gear real quick. Because it's... The switch is at like 2.8 or 3.8. I'm not entirely sure. I knew when I was flying it. But we're just going to be chasing him down to the deck. And see if we can finally kill him. I'm going to go shallow climb. Shallow dive, I should say. And I will eventually cut this guy off. B25 right now is no priority. Because the Spitfire can very easily kill us. We'll go back to the B25 when we actually can. So after catching the Spitfire for a little bit. We are going to catch him before he reaches the airfield. We don't have much ammo left. But we should have sufficient to kill these last three guys. He goes vertical. Worst choice he could have made. He does it right in our guns. We hold the trigger down. And he gets absolutely dick slapped by an MK-108. We then climb away from him from... The other direction of the airfield. And we make sure that we have a little bit of altitude on the B25. So he doesn't actually head on us. Because I don't want that to happen. 
I'd rather have his gunner shoot at me. Most people are not that experienced with them. And they pack quite a lot less of a punch. So I'm just going to try to go fast and kind of treat him like a fighter. And I did check the Key 61 real quick there. Because I have a feeling he's going to camp the airfield. Which uh, unironically, or unsurprisingly I should say, is exactly what he's going to end up doing. We have three and a half minutes of fuel left. As you can see on the clock. And I've been circling around damaged on 40% throttle. And this guy with his smoke on has been circling it for about 4 to 5 minutes now. Because we are cruising on 40%. I'm dead. I'm basically telling him come collect your fucking kill. It's not that difficult. And he still refuses to come out when we are on completely equal energy. Look at this right here. Look at this right here. Equal energy in a key 61 versus a Tau 154. And when people say, oh, just ground pound, that's not enough time. Because they killed some tickets at the start. And the match is about to end, so I'm just going to full send it. I don't have fuel, I don't have speed. I'm going to shoot my things in the long range head on to make him dodge, and he does. We recommit, I'm just going to stick it. There's no reason for me not to. And I get a fucking shot on the fire. Guess what? You lose. Thank you, Snail. What a fantastic game. Such stellar game design. Still not as dreadful as working 24 hours straight, I do have to admit. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.